which are prohibited in the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, from the bid'ah and the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you have a mazar, a grave of a wali of Allah, in the Hanafi school it is permissible to have a restroom for the visitors. So, for instance, there's a wali buried somewhere, and the awqaf, they build a restroom. People come and do ziyarah, this is permitted. In the Hanafi school, you can check this. But the early Hanafis, they said placing a, a clot on the grave is prohibited. The early Hanafis. Then, Al-Imam Ibn Abidin rahimahullah ta'ala said, in our times, he said one clot is permitted, why? So the common people do not disrespect the grave of a wali. Because when you go to a, a graveyard, you see the graves, you will think these are the graves of common people. He said one clot is permitted. So when someone sees the one clot, they know the, under this grave is a pious person, they do not disrespect the grave. And a resting place is permitted. Why? How do we define bid'ah? We look at the fatawa, the verdicts in our madhab, in all four madhabs. And what does Al Imam Ahmad Ridha Khan rahimahullah ta'ala say? He says extravagance on the graves with placing two or three or four cloths is what prohibited in the Sharia of Allah. Remember the early Hanafis permitted it, uh, did not permit even one cloth. Ibn Abidin permitted it on the basis that people do not, do not disrespect the grave. But later generations have introduced bid'ah and the shrines that they place two or three or four. All of this is prohibited in the Sharia of Allah. But today when we go to Indo Pak, we will observe the ghulu, the exaggeration. For instance, in our region in Dadial, they even have a shrine uh, which is with bells. <coughs> So you go in, you press a bell. Of course, this is from the Hindus. They took this from the Hindus. It's a ritual from the Hindus. Similarly, they have a shrine in Pakistan that when you visit the grave, you take off your trousers and you place the trousers on a washing line and then you leave. And they have one like this for women as well. Now what happens, the intelligent person he sees this and he thinks this is the Brailwis. He thinks this is the Sufis. He thinks this is the Ahl Sunnah people. They do this. They permit this. And what do they do then? They go to the opposite extreme which is Wahhabism. What, how is Wahhabism the opposite extreme someone may say? The opposite extreme of Wahhabism is such that what they do is they demolish the entire shrine. They demolish the entire grave. And in some points, what will they do? They will exhume the body. This happened in Libya. So in Libya, the, the shrines are preserved. But when the Wahhabis, after NATO support, they removed Qaddafi, some of them, what did they do? They demolished entire shrines and they exhumed some of the bodies of the awliya, radiallahu anhum. So that's the other extreme. Because they associate practice with shirk. But in Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is the middle way. Uh, the uh, Ummah and Wasata, the middle way. That firstly, we, if there is a Salih person buried in a grave, we preserve the grave. We do not, it's not permissible to make the grave high. If they build a structure around the grave which is high, it's permitted in order to preserve the grave. But what we do not do is ghulu, exaggeration around the graves. But because Indo-Pak has Hindu culture, what they do is they mix Hindu culture into their visitation of graves. So if you go to Ajmer Sharif today, you will observe Hindu culture in how they practice visiting the shrines. They have Hindu culture. So they have no other of firstly visiting the graves. One of those things, the ghulu, is the circumambulation tawaf of the graves. This is a bid'ah which is introduced in the deen of Allah. The only place you can do tawaf is the Kaaba of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is totally prohibited to do tawaf of anything else. 
But what do they do? They do tawaf of the graves. Additionally, they have some people doing sajda to the graves. Now, uh, some of the fuqaha in the other madhahib, like Ramli and others, they have mentioned if someone kisses the ataba, which is the doorstep of a wali shrine, it's permitted. They mention this. Some people will quote this. Uh, and that's not in the Hanafi school, it's in the other schools. They say, if you go to see uh, a wali or a pious person, you kiss the doorstep, it's permissible. Now something being permissible does not mean that it's always wise to do so. I'll give you an example. Is kissing the hands of a pious person permitted? The answer is yes. Is kissing the feet of a pious person permitted in Sharia? The answer is yes. That would mean kissing the feet of an alim is permitted. Now, imagine an alim walked in and when he walks in, one of the zealot murids stands up and jumps and kisses his feet. What will happen? The observer will observe him doing this and he will think that the person is doing a sajda to his peer or his shaykh. And it leads to more fitna. It leads to people being maftoon. Because some of them will think, they were simpletons, they will think the person is doing a sajda. Others will think it's a haram act. This should give us a qaida. The qaida is that if something is permissible in the sharia, but you believe by doing that thing, it will lead to more corruption than avoid doing that thing. If all the groups, Islamic groups, follow this qaida, you will not have many uh, tribulations and ikhtilaf. That certain things are permitted. But if you believe by doing that permitted thing, it would lead people becoming maftoon, then you avoid that thing. Even if you believe that thing is permitted. And kissing the feet of people would fall into that. So similarly, Al-Imam Ahmad Ridha Khan, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions that kissing the graves of the awliya is mamnu'. He uses the word mamnu'. Why do they use the word mamnu' in fiqh? Because if something is permissible in itself, but it becomes impermissible because of extraneous factors, then they use the word mamnu'. He says, you stand four feet away from the grave. You do not go and kiss the grave. You do not even touch the grave. He mentions all of this, but why did he mention this? What fiqh was this based upon? It was based upon the fact that one thing leads to another and then people exaggerate how they behave around the graves. So similarly, we need to practice these things because we have people today, they will jump on the shrine and they even cling to the shrine. And then they shout out the name of the wali, which is totally disrespectful. Why is it disrespectful? For instance, we have Mufti Sahib here. If someone stood in front of him and started shouting, Mufti Sahib, you are Mufti Sahib, it's disrespectful. Why is it disrespectful? The person is not deaf. You call to him with other. So similarly, when you go to the grave of a Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani, radiallahu an, if you cling to the grave, and you start saying, Ya Shaykh Abdul Qadir, is this adab with the Imam Abdul Qadir al Jilani radiallahu and the answer is it is not adab. The adab is you stand far. The adab is that you do not shout out aloud. The adab is you do dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit you from your ziyara of Shaykh Abdul Qadir al Jilani radiallahu an. This is the adab. This is the balanced way of Al-Islam and the balanced way of Ahl-Sunnati wal-Jama'ah.